Hi, this is Dave Campbell, Executive Director at Camp Marshall, and here we are in week five. In our last week, the theme is action. And I wonder what that means when we think about um, over the course of the summer, I wonder how many of you remember Acts chapter 2 in the early church, the Fellowship of Believers. The premise at week one was um, if we live it with intentionality, our lives change. Uh, they are moved, and we begin to see how God is working in our lives. And in this week in action, the invitation is for you to start making things happen in your life. And so I've got some props here. One of those props is going to be just the prayer book. When we talk about being devoted to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and the prayers, the prayer book the last of the words I just said, prayers, is an amazing tool. And we've been using it for the last four weeks, and we'll be using it right on through the end. And, and we'll be probably, I will be continuing to do morning prayer and staying in the prayers, hopefully, for the rest of my life. And so the prayer book is an excellent thing to have close by as a reminder about action, about something we do with our time. So I'm going to take this prayer book. I'm going to put this and keep this in my treasure chest because I don't want to lose it. And I am planning on using it. Another prop, something that's really important when we're thinking about life as a drama, is the Holy Bible. This is where we're going to find the Apostles' teaching. This is where we're going to find ways to wonder what does it look like uh, if we, for example, sold our possessions and gave to people that have need. We can wonder what that is. And we can wonder what it is that the Holy Spirit would like us to do with our lives and then begin doing it. Scripture is an amazing uh, place to find community. So th when we talk about action, it's, it's what we learn and digest and read, and it's also how we engage in those things with the community around us. And even though this can be a challenge in, in a COVID year, we can begin to look at opportunities to meet online, opportunities to build a community, um, and how do we make that intentionally happen? Uh, we've been doing that this summer, and we're hoping to continue that work in the fall. So think about the importance of Scripture in your action plan. And lastly, calendar. Now, my calendar is on my phone, and actually the Bible is on my phone, and actually the prayer book is on my phone. I've got them all three right here. And I'm going to put it in here It's an illustration that, yes, it's a treasure, and you know what? I use this thing so much, I'm going to keep it with me. Action. So, to be, to live in a Christian lifestyle requires, well, maybe let's think of it this way. Imagine you're on a movie set. God is the director, you're the actor, and you're in the great play of life. You have an opportunity when God looks at you and says, action. Hello, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, for those of you who don't know me for some reason yet, my name is Janelle Willett, and I've been lucky enough this summer to be on our online Christian formation team here at Camp Marshall. And we're all kind of sharing our keynote address this week. Uh, this summer at camp has looked different than any other summer in camp history. Uh, since 1947, we've never had to cancel camp due to a pandemic. And we canceled it because due to COVID-19, we didn't think it was safe to hold in person. Uh, however, did that stop us from continuing our mission, which is to restore all people to unity to God through Jesus Christ? Heck no, it didn't. So what did we do? How did we go from having to cancel camp to how do we still restore people in unity to Christ. How do we do that? Uh, well, we stepped out in faith and we decided to figure out what we could do rather than focus on what we can't do. And what we could do was create some really amazing online digital content. Um, and we also did live events and we also did small groups. And all of those things to me have been kind of an incredible uh, process to see them take shape and how they evolved. I've been lucky enough to get to head up the small groups and wow, what an amazing, amazing thing they've been. Uh, we had leaders from four different states uh, step up and say, yes, I will show up every week to talk to students, to meet with them, to pray with them and laugh with them. But halfway through our summer, we also decided to add a young adult group and a parent support group. 
And what I learned is that right now, more than ever, people want to feel connected. They want to feel heard and they want to pray together. So we shared, we laughed, we prayed. We became the church inside of a Zoom room. A lot of you know this already, but I came to camp as a kid and I've been involved in camp or youth ministry in some way ever since. I met my wife here. Uh, I got married exactly where we are in this chapel. We baptized our daughter in this place. Uh, to say camp is important to me is a pretty big understatement. Um, this place, this sacred place, means so much to me. But what this summer has made abundantly clear to me is that despite COVID and a pandemic, despite having to not have camp in person, camp continues, the mission continues, and the church continues. Last year, a friend of mine from camp that I met said to me, hard isn't bad. Hard is just a chance to grow and to learn. And I think that's a really important statement. This summer has been hard. This pandemic is hard. The polarized political views is hard. But God, God is good. God is good today, God is good now, and God is good always. Now and forever, throughout all ages. And our mission, our, our calling, is to help God with his mission, which is to love people. That's it. It's so simple. We're called to love people. That's our action. So, again, if schools stay closed or whether or not they open, if your family's wearing a mask or if they're not, our call, your call, is to love people. That's it. It's so simple. So, looking forward, we're about to end our virtual camp. Looking forward, uh, one of the things we're going to continue to do is have those small groups. We're going to continue to meet in Zoom rooms, to laugh, to pray. We're going to provide it for all ages. We hope you can make it. If you can't, find another small group. Being connected right now is more important than ever. Find people to connect with, to pray with. The other thing that I'm going to challenge you to do is love. Where can you love? How can you love? In what area? Are you an essential worker? Love your coworkers. Are you not an essential worker? Love through Zoom room. However your life looks like going ahead, Find a way to step into that authentic relationship with God and present that to other people. I think right now there's a real danger in settling into the negativity and I think there's real power in being positive. So to end, I wanted to share with you a verse that's really popular. Uh, we often hear it at weddings, but I think it, right now it applies to what we're called to do more than ever. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will go away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child and I reasoned like a child. When I became a woman, I gave up childish ways. For we now see in a mere dimly, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I will know fully. So right now, today, faith, hope, and love abide. These three things. But the greatest of them all is love. You are now listening to Connor O'Boyle, the media director of Camp Marshall. Hello, virtual camp community. I'm Connor O'Boyle, the media director of Camp Marshall, just in case you missed the intro. I'm here on Flathead Lake, reflecting upon my experiences here at camp this summer. I really couldn't have imagined to say those two words together unless it was the year 2060 and all the trees were replaced by cheap air fresheners and it smelled so bad that the only way you could do camp was virtually. But here we are. To start off, I have to say that I recognize that there are a lot of you out there who wish you were able to work or camp here this summer. I got here because I'm David Campbell's nephew, while some of you were practically raised here. Despite this, I wanted to do my very best to help represent the beauty of camp 
in an online form so you could behold it with me. I believe that I have accomplished this to some extent, but as you know, I can't recreate what this place does to people in person. As for my own experience here at camp this summer, I came here almost entirely uncertain about my faith, and at the end of it, I can't help but want to identify as a Christian. There's something undeniable about being this close to nature and in a place where so many people have prayed and experienced profound moments with God. An encouragement I have for you comes from almost every interviewee I've talked to for my Faith Life Zoomcast. While you were unable to come to camp this summer in person, you can still spend time doing what you love and in turn spend time with the Holy Spirit. Whether you love creating movies like me, playing guitar like PJ, or coming up with games like Janelle or David, it is important to do these things whenever you can. We can constantly find ourselves stuck in hate or regret or self-loathing when the answer to all these problems can be found by simply giving ourselves time for love. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. And remember, when you're out of your COVID bubble, wear a mask. Everybody who's been to Camp Marshall has a favorite spot at camp. The campfire is mine. I think if you've been here with it within the last few years, you probably know that. It's where I learned a lot. It's where I feel the closest to God. And it's where I feel the happiest. I know a lot of you are really sad that you couldn't physically be here this summer, and that is a bummer. Um, nobody could have foreseen this, so it's not, it's not like we were planning on doing a summer like this. However, a lot of good things have come out of it. Uh, I think people now realize they need to be connected to other people, and we've seen that in the Zoom rooms and with all of the other media we've made this summer that people feel as though they're happy to be connected with Kim Marshall, which is great. It's also brought a lot of other things to light. Um, we want to expand youth ministry in the state of Montana. Right now, there aren't very, very many churches in Montana with a youth program uh, in the Episcopal Diocese. And that's crazy because in my youth group, we have so much fun. In Janelle's youth group, they have so much fun. And we have so much fun here at camp. And we're looking to bring that excitement and energy of camp into the off season. You know, camp doesn't just have to be here. Camp isn't this physical place. This is my favorite place, but it's not the place that makes it special necessarily. It's the people. Um, we're going to have a few gatherings. If, if things look better by then, we're hoping they're going to be in person. So on October 10th, we're going to have a virtual gathering. January 16th, we're going to have another virtual gathering. Uh, I think this is all via Zoom. And then April 16th and 18th of 2021, uh, we're going to try to have an in-person youth gathering. Hopefully, by April of next year, things will be looking better. If not, it will become a virtual gathering. But if so, we would love to see you there. Thank you for joining us this summer via virtual camp, and we really hope to see you next summer in 2021.